Okay, let me start now. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, professors. Uh, here's my DRF final evaluation pre presentation, and my name is Yu Hongyu. My, my supervisor is Dr. Wang Chen. My the project title is Inverse Design Photonic Devices. Uh, let me introduce the background. Uh, the microelectronic technology uh, and now the chip manufacturing process is less than five nanometers. It has the crosstalk heat and high uh, power consumption, these problems. And due to the most law, it's difficult to find a breakthrough in this field. So let's, so we focus on the optical chips and which is new, uh, new field and is potential. And they are generally made of compo uh, compound semiconductor ma materials and uh, can uh, mutually convert the photoelectrical signals through the generation and the absorption of photons. And uh, instead of the electrons, uh, the carrier they use is a higher frequency light wave. So it has the ad advantage of the low loss and the wider bandwidth and smaller delays and the stronger re resistance. And uh, here is the silicon photonics chips and, uh, and these two part is a waveguide. And uh, here is a cross section of the waveguide. And the waveguide is a structure for directing uh, electromagnetic waves and we focused on this part. And uh, here is the motor construction. And, and here is the input waveguide, here is the output waveguide. The EM wave will, will well, it's into this waveguide and out of the, this waveguide. And uh, the main part is uh, our design region. Uh, it will include the waveguide and it should like like these to make the, uh, can, can you see my mouse? Yes. Uh, it can, it can look, it will look, should look like this to transmit the EM waves. So the key challenge for this is, for design this is the reduction in size and the high level of performance. So we use a new technology called inverse design. It can realize ultra compact and high performance nanophotonic devices. So it's different from traditional designs. Traditional design is the designer should uh, de design the circuit and uh, do a simulation and get the uh, parameters. And if this parameter is different from the object parameter, it will modify the de circuit design and do a simulation again and again. But the, the inverse design, we just need to set our objective parameter and do the simulation and the computer will the progress the, the computer will tell us how to design the circuit so the traditional design method relies on the designer's repeated calculation and simulations so it is in, if, efficient and sometimes the uh, designers will trap in their experience and the expertise but the inverse design is the design is automatically obtained and it's very efficient. And also there are a lot of algorithms we can use. And also sometimes it will uh, occur some unexpected innovation uh, results. And uh, the main technology of invert design is the large scale gradient based optimization. Um, but in this optimization, the main problem is that when the scale is too large, we need to calculate a lot of gradients and each gradient is a simulation. It means that if we had uh, hundreds of points, we have to do hundreds of simulations. It takes a lot of time and calculations. And what we will do is to using the a joint method to solve this problem. It can get the whole gradient of the design region just using only two simulations. So it provides a, an extremely cheap gradient and uh, it can accelerate in the algorithms. So here is a simulation result. We can see that in the initial states, there is nothing in the design region, no waveguide, but after uh, 48 times of iterations, it gets this result uh, and the waveguide is look like this. So it's very powerful, right? And how does the uh, joint server work? Sorry. Uh, here is the working principles of the uh, joint server. First is we're coding up a cost function and uh, this creating is the design region and, he, and here is the design region and into several pictures and it will calculate the gradient of this call of the cost function respect to all the pixels and then it will use the optimization algorithm to maximum the gradient and finally get the design region so how do we use the uh, joint solver we use the MIP, a free and open source software package and uh, the 
language is Python. And, and you can see that here is the code of my project. And we use the list inverse design with a join method to design two main fundamental uh, fundamental uh, circuit fundamental component in the uh, photonic circuit, the band waveguide and the waveguide splitter. Here, the band waveguide is used to uh, change the direction of the waveguide. And why do we design band waveguide? Because the traditional band waveguide requires hundreds of microns of radius. It's very costly, but if we design it by the joint solver and the inverse design, the radius is only 2.5 microns, which is uh, much smaller than the traditional band waveguide. And you can see the result. Here we use 2.5 cross 2.5 uh, microns uh, design field and we get the uh, iteration results and also the final uh, inversion loss is very close to zero. It's very effective. And uh, the second is a waveguide splitter is used to split the wave power in from one into two. And uh, why do we need to design the waveguide splitter? Because the tra traditional structure is using the MMI type. It, it is sensitive to the geometric side and there is no efficiency. But when we're using the joint solver, uh, it is high efficiency because the computer computers automatically calculated it and we don't need to manually adjust the parameters. And uh, there are two methodologies we use to design the power splitter. The first one is a symmetric four band splitter design. As you can see that there are two waveguides and they are symmetrical to the X axis. So we can just uh, uh, set our design region be symmetrical to the uh, X axis. And uh, in this case, we just need to calculate the output of one waveguide. It saves a lot of time and calculation. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, when we run the program, the program runs faster and uh, get the identical results with just 32 times of iterations. And also the mean spin ratio is uh, 0 0.5. It means that almost all power tra has transformed uh, through this waveguide. But what can we do if the design field is not symmetric? For example, we, if we have three uh, uh, waveguides, output waveguide, what, what can we do? The answer is using the maxi, minimax optimization. But we still use two output for demonstration and uh, and show the use of minimax optimization by deleting the symmetry. So what is minimax optimization? It means to minimize the maximum values. So for example, you have a lot of uh, out, uh, output loss. Each, wave, each output waveguide will have a loss. So you have this value and you want to minimize the maximum value of, of the output loss so that this loss will be smaller and be closer. So you have this f, x means the maximum of the output loss and uh, why don't it why and uh, why don't we directly pass this function to the calculator because it's not ever differentiable even if G, every gx is differentiable but this function is not differentiable so we can use a gradient based algorithm that provided by the adjoint method so what we would do is to adding a dummy parameters and then constraints these parameters uh, the the gk minus t should less one zero and the uh, and the, the constraint is here and use and it means that the uh, uh, parameters and the power loss should be should not be very close because the program would be stuck at at here so the so the our object is is just to uh minimize the linear function t instead of the g the instead of this fx and uh, here is the coding part. We just said our object function is uh, one over m minus the output power. This is the power loss, and we introduce some dumb, dummy parameters. And what we will do is just simply minimizing the value of t. And here is the final result. So you can see that the design file, the waveguide is not symmetric, but we can see the result. The last error ratio is uh, just one percent. Uh, and the, the difference of the two output waveguides is this is very small. It means that the two waveguides output is identical. So here is the future task. Uh, you're almost good. running out of time. Could you wrap up soon? Uh, okay, I will be fast. Yes. Uh, here's the error constraint. And uh, 
and uh, and and in the and in the fabricate these. This this island and these holes uh, are impossible to fabricate because it's too small, and we want to eliminate this. And we use this method, uh, follow this paper, and using and calculating these two parameters to tell the optimizer to eliminate these two region. And uh, we use two matching square algorithm to find the contour because uh, these two these two parameters is the contour of the islands and holes. So so here we use the matching square algorithm. It will Using this formulation and uh, to convert this like this contour to this field to to this program to get the contour, and finally we this, this is the final results. Here is the waveguide and we use the, the matching square algorithm to get the contour of small contours and uh, and divide it into contours of island and contours of holes, and we can eliminate eliminate the, the, them by the by by this by this paper and these two parameters. And thanks for Dr. Wang Shen for his kind support and patient. And thanks for the department for providing this DRF project and uh, my PhD Chen Fei who helps a lot in my uh, in, in this year. Yeah, thank you all. <laughs>